bring this meeting to order. This is the October 17, 2018 meeting of the Saisla Valley Fire and Rescue Board of Directors. Please join us in Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So 
then you would probably not see it any there or not there. Um, I also put in a, um, a monthly profit and loss just for the month of September, and at the bottom of that report is shows the monthly expense um, that's on the agenda to ratify of the hundred and forty eight thousand. Okay. And then with the budget versus actual report, we are one quarter into the fiscal year, so the expenses should be at or below 25% with the exception of the expense items that are paid in full annually. Um, some of those are like target solutions, you know, some of these where we pay like a, an annual fee up front. So you might see some of those. And one of the other things I did was I, I worked with um, Chief Dickerson on the grant, or excuse me, the conflag um, expenses, and I was able to do the journal entry. We figured out the wages and the overtime, and did I did a journal entry to move those out of wages and overtime and into the conflag um, account. So you'll see that um, on that report, we are right on target for wages and overtime. Yeah. And I was also hoping that the board could have a, a discussion regarding an ad hoc finance committee. Uh, we can revisit that after I get done, if you like. Sure. Or we, um, bank accounts, we, um, I've got the signature cards today for all of the board members and um, Chief Abel and Chief Dickerson to sign. Um, Director Hickson, I think you've got them next to you. Everybody signed, so whenever, you know, after the meeting, that would be great. And I also have, um, if you have time to stay a little bit, I've got the two months bank statements that need to be reviewed. Um, I've closed the eBay account, bank account. It wasn't being used, and the new Visa cards for staff have been ordered. Uh, moving on to payroll, we September was there were no mistakes on the Sayusa Valley Fire payroll, and in an effort to make up for past errors, ADP did waive their fees for September. So I, I think that must have come up when I was I missed the last meeting, uh, so I just kind of got wind of these mistakes. Was that something that ADP caused, or yes, okay. it was something that the, the first two months of ADP we were working with the implementation team. And they were with us each stage, and then we went on our own, and things were good in June. In July, we started seeing mistakes, so we were working with their support team, and they were saying, you know, that was just like a phone call, and whoever is on the other end, and they said, yeah, we got it fixed, and then we hit um, end of August, September payroll, and it was the same issues. So Chief Langford got on the phone with ADP and got went to a higher level and said, this cannot be. We need 100% accuracy. So we have, are working with the team, Holly and I are working with the team now that are on the phone as we process payroll, and they will be on it one more month just to make sure. And then the last thing I have is that um, we're, staff has been helping me with all the documents that we need to pull for the audit. The auditors plan on being here next week, all week, to do the audits for both districts given us our marching orders and our list of documents to pull, and we've been working hard to get ready for that. And I have one more thing at the end of the meeting, if you could address the, um, the scheduling of the November meeting, because right now it stands as the night before Thanksgiving, so that might need to be rescheduled. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's address that. Okay, Western Lane is already they have moved their board meeting to the following week because they planned on Thanksgiving Day. And we, we can defer that to the uh, portion of the agenda where we cover sure. our agenda. I just wanted to make a, make a note to it before it didn't get overlooked. Please. Um, is Scott Hartney? Scott Hartney. Uh, construction, is, is that the final bill, do you know? I am hoping it is. Uh, Chief Langborg and I met before he left, and he gave me the status of where we were on the seismic grant, 
And um, I think we are still waiting for the final engineering from HGE. Um, that was supposed to be in by the end of September, yeah. and it hasn't been, so. Okay, um, do you know, according to your books, if, uh, you know, when we get a grant, there's usually a matching fund we have to do? There was no, uh, there was no matching with the seismic. That was 100% reimbursement. Okay. No matching with the seismic. What about the turnouts, the holes, and the recruitment retention office? Were there, uh, there, I know there was some uh, post grant that we, we had to, to match. Five percent match on the hose. Uh, there's zero match on the safer grant and the wildland grant. Uh, is a ten percent match, and the next year's grant, if we're awarded, is a fifteen percent match. Okay. The question I have is. Is now Mapleton and Swiss on Deadwood are benefiting from this, correct? They uh, on the hose grant they have been built. Did they, do we get did they pay a percentage of that uh, match? The percentage of the match was calculated out as from the total cost and split out uh, according to the amount of hose that they got. They have been invoiced. Uh, we have Swiss on Deadwood paid. Uh, Mapleton has been reinvoiced, but both have been invoiced, and we will see those. Okay, and can we put that? Uh, it's not in the income, but it would be in a special column where we for, for those grants. It's so, in the, it's so in the accounts receivable. You want it itemized, so you want to. I want to be able to see where that where the money comes from, just like from Western Lane when we get reimbursed from Western Lane. Right. Uh, that's an item that I'd really like to see. On that form, some okay, so that we're aware that 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 money's coming in as well. Okay. Okay. So the balance sheet does reflect accounts receivable for those. Well, since they're small amounts, they're in the okay. regular accounts receivable okay. because it was a smaller invoice and yeah. not not in the the post grant and the seismic and safer grants were where we were getting the reimbursements from the granting agency. Okay. I just, I, I just think that we need to keep track of that, sure. especially because, you know, uh, if someone comes in and says, well, they didn't pay their share, we got to be able to show that they did. All right. And there's no gift of public funds involved in that. Right. Thank you. Yep. Need a question on that. that with our new software uh, for accounting, are you preparing an accounts receivable aging? Yes. Are we? I can run our agent Maybe report. Maybe that could just be a, a regular part of the balance oh, sheet okay. reporting report. Okay. So you see the number and we put it with our agent report. I can do that. That would answer your questions, John. Thank you. Are there any other questions on the financials? I just had one um, under the operation expense 99.99 or the reconciliation discrepancy of maybe 5,000. The 5,182? That was a, I think that was, re, I know it was related to a journal entry that Kathy and I performed. And um, that's on my list to address with the auditors because when I went to reconcile one of the bank accounts, the ending balance didn't match what the ending balance should be. So I had to make that adjustment in order to reconcile the bank accounts. Okay. So that will be addressed when Kathy returns and the auditors are here. Okay. That, I, I, that should go away. Other questions on the financial report, or financial statements, I should say. Uh, if not, then the expenses for the month do foot accordingly $148,019.08. We need to ratify the expenses in the transfer fund money market. I would like to declare a conflict. Okay, so duly noted. I will make that motion. I want to thank you very much. This is a far cry from my uh, we have a motion uh, to ratify the expenses and the transfer. Is there a second? I'll second. And second by Director Hickson. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Thank you. Uh, do we want to, before you even do your report, do we want to talk about the ad hoc committee during this sec? Is that okay? That would be great. Um, I think it was noted both in Chief Langborg's, uh, former Chief Langborg's last report, but the idea would be a committee of members of both 
ambulance and fire boards is correct. And uh, to identify what specifically the boards respectively want to see in financial statements and to make sure that it's prepared consistently. Right, and the action the board takes right now, um, fire district approve, uh, ratifies a dollar amount mm -hmm. and uh, Western Lane approves a transaction list. Oh, I see. So it would be, it's not that big of a deal, but it would be nice to have a consistency. I mean, that's what I would think this financial committee would evaluate and decide what is the, you know, what do other fire districts do? What do other, you know, um, what's protocol? Um, and just kind of get, you know, you both want a balance sheet, you both want a profit and loss, you both want this. And I know Western Lane probably, they want a couple extra reports that are coming from um, systems designs, you know, and their collections for their, but just to get both boards with the same financials would make it easier for me to manage. Okay. Uh, I've talked to a couple of directors and uh, I guess, uh, to my right, either of you want to serve on that committee? I don't feel I'm qualified. Okay. <laughs> I was going to jump all over. I thought it was Ham Hock Committee. Yeah. That's so why I was all over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was yeah. Had some beans on the side. Is that yeah. it? <laughs> um, I would prefer not to. Okay. But if, you know, if there is no one else, I will do it. But well, that, that's fine. So uh, Woody has volunteered. So okay. then I will appoint Woody and myself going to offer to you first uh, to that committee and uh, has the ambulance district appointed their members yet? No, they'll be discussing it. Okay. Next and certainly uh, as everyone understands that any change in financial reporting will require board approval. Right. That committee is right. not going to make any decisions. So. Okay. Thank you. You bet. Okay. Uh, there is no old business, correct? Correct. All right, so the, uh, so to speak, last hurrah of report prepared by Jim Langborg. Uh, any discussion on that? Any uh, comments? We've, we've dealt with the ad hoc finance committee. Uh, there is a discussion, I believe, in there about the purge representative coming to the December meeting, is that correct? Mm -hmm. And so, and the recommendation would that be a joint meeting? Yes. Yeah. So I think we need to try to schedule that. December 19th. Yes. That also Wednesday? Yes. That would be our original schedule meeting date. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Dina or Steve, anything that, with respect to what's in that report that we need to bring out or, or any questions from the board? If not, we'll move on. Uh, there was the report from Lori Severance and the community support team uh, the report. Any discussion or comments from the board on that? No, I, I, it's good to have that information. I agree. Yeah. For sure. Okay. Um, that was just a footnote to Jim's report. So, uh, operations chief, Chief Dickerson, please. Monthly report uh, had a little breather and calls went down to 52. Uh, expected that. Looking at statistics down from the 70s is nice. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that puts us at a total call at the end of the month. We were at 521. Uh, we did have the Sand Dunes Frontier property loss, so that was coming up. Average number of firefighters per incident was seven. Uh, for structure fires, we're still at uh, around 14. That's for large working fires. Uh, down one from that 2018 average for the year. Average response time, excluding out of district and code one, would be eight and a half minutes. Uh, our average for the entire year is 9.75. We had a few pretty long ones. The academy started up. We have 17 uh, coming to the academy, uh, nine from Saislaw Valley, three from Gardner, which we added at the last last minute. We had a meeting and they asked if they could send some folks up. Good. Uh, they also sent an instructor. Well, one from Mapleton, and uh, I believe four from Sosom Didwood. And they're up, uh, all all departments, with the exception of Mapleton, are also sending instructors to help out with the crews and getting some really good their cooperation from the mutual aid partners on that. It's excellent. And how does it with, with the instructors if they're coming from, you know, Gardner or, or wherever, how does that mesh with um, our program? Well, it's nice because we have a standardized program. Uh, they've all been through the, the target solutions training 
Gotcha. Previous, so this is the hands-on training. We're all doing it the same way. Once they've got previews of it, great. Makes it a lot nicer when we're operating on the scene the same way. The way in, in the event of a, you know, a bunch of them all together, everybody's going to speak the same language and you're doing the same techniques. And that's great. Exactly. Don't have ladders getting carried two different directions at the same time. Uh, prevention. Uh, we had fire prevention week, which is a really big week. Um, and some really big projects going on. We've got the company inspections, uh, the day crew and Cap Miller are getting out, really doing a lot of those. We're starting to get ready to get the volunteers in there. Uh, we are actually into the middle school and high school this year, which is nice. Um, it's sometimes overlooked. You know, kindergarten, second grade, you can learn about it. But uh, from my time in the different districts, especially back in the Midwest, I worked in a college town, and those kids didn't know anything about fire prevention. So it's nice to tell some of these high school seniors how not to catch the dorm room on fire. Uh, recruitment and retention, uh, BOA always provides a really good report, I included that. Uh, station 1 for facilities, we had uh, a little bit of a roof, roof leak, uh, probably not be cheap to fix. It's around one of the scuppers over the resident dormitory, and that goes down into the supply room, so we had some water damage from that. I'm really glad it's not doing the full October rain yet. It's going to be coming on Friday to give us an estimate on fixing that. It was a great start this morning. Yeah, great hand. <laughs> Um, so the roof age and looking at what would go on, I'd have to look at that. That's an option that I can consider, but I don't think that insurance would cover that. We did talk about that at lunch today, about the roof and so forth, and it doesn't look like there's any accident or anything that happened. It appears so far as just normal wear and tear. And that's up on the flat part of the roof. On the flat part of the membrane. Uh, air monitors, um, we don't have any effective CO monitors going right now, so all of our forecasts, that's something we'll be looking at at a dry period, is a budgeted item. Uh, truck 1 went for its annual maintenance and is completed use. That was a nice, it has to happen. Uh, you plan on that being up to $10,000 a year, so we can actually be pretty good at $6,000. Everything was looking good on it. Uh, EMT and EMR paperwork is complete with this date. Uh, EMR task books were completed at Western Lane and our staff are starting to go through those. Uh, EMTs will be coming soon. Uh, EMR is scheduled for right after the uh, academy, so for those recruits that would want to get into that and some of our members that want to jump on, they'll be doing so. Uh, the standard cover committee was not able to meet because it would have been me by myself and we would have got a lot done, but um, <laughs> There were some injuries and illness, so people weren't able to come, so uh, hope to see that next month for you guys. Uh, if there are no other questions, I attach staff reports and statistics. Yeah, good reports. Any questions important, John? I just have one question. Uh, we, we donated a 1981 GMC water tender to Swiss Home Depot. The, the tender, yes. Yeah, the water tender. Do you know if all the repairs were made on that? We made a brake repair that was a suggested repair, mm -hmm. and they took it to their mechanic, and they were happy with the, the way it operated, and the mechanic gave it a clean bill of health, and it actually responded to the last mutual aid call. Okay. Can we get a copy of that clean bill of health? Because I don't want them coming back if something happens. I will contact you. Uh, I'll you contact know, Chief Hertz Bond and get that. You do understand what I'm trying to get at here. Is yes, sir. If, some, if, if, if we deemed it unsafe for us to operate, and they took it, and something happens, we can't do that. We have to make sure it's safe for them to have. Uh, I will contact Chief Hertzbaugh and get that from them, but I also included on the paperwork that it was as is, where it is when they picked it up. Yeah, but, but this kind of secures that and, and gets us out of the way. Does and one of the things I, I found is it's being removed. Um, we discussed it on scene. Um, it still sits how you saw on the back of the truck. Yes. Um, so the suggestion we'll make here is that we remove any of those before they go off elsewhere. But I agree with you, especially when it has our district name on it. Yeah. yeah. Good point. Okay. Any other questions for Chief Dickerson? Did they um, use that tender in the uh, wild land? Um, what they did. 
All right. Um, well, the agenda shows the office manager report, but Dina, you kind of covered most of this already, or anything Well, I think 99% of it. Okay. I have 1% like more. Okay, please hit that one. Um, I just wanted to mention that um, this fiscal year, probably in the spring, once we get closer to the end of the fiscal year, there will be a supplemental budget that comes to the board um, with the um, with the hiring of Chief Abel and and the overlap with Chief Langborg's um, vacation payout, and Chief Langborg is still on the payroll with vacation time because his last day officially is November 19th. Um, there is overlap there, and there will most likely be overlap when um, Chief when the board brings on a, a new manager uh, or chief, excuse me, before the end of the fiscal year. So there will need to be some contingency um, transfer to cover that. Are you thinking about when? Well, I usually don't like to do supplemental budgets until towards the getting, like in the spring, yeah. because that way because you, things could move around between now and then, but that when you get like three months out, you get a better picture of really where you're at. And I don't think we're planning on this, but I think we need to evaluate whether or not we want to hire a placement agent. And that would be an expense to the district if we did that, as far as for a fee. Mm -hmm. We want to actually understand what those costs are before you prepare that budget. Right. So. And the um, along with that supplemental budget, there's with uh, Kathy's reorganization of the charter accounts, there's been some um, movement with accounts between personnel services and materials and services. And we just want to make sure okay. everything lines up correctly before the end of the fiscal year. Great. Yeah. All right. That's the one percent. That's it. Okay. Any other questions for? Being on the office manager before. Yeah. Good job on all the work on the financials. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right, that covers all the reports. Um, I don't think there's any new business to to uh, bring up. Um, anything that the directors want to bring up, discuss that's not on the agenda this evening? We were talking a little bit before the meeting started. Uh, I'm really concerned that when the budget committee okayed the budget, we did not have all. They did not have all the information. We didn't have all the information. And it wasn't until afterwards. And I'm really concerned, not so much about this year, but what's going to happen in the next year's budget. Because if we end up buying borrowing money, or if we we already have borrowed some money out of some of our accounts, we're going to have to pay that back. Because we've got a lot of apparatus that will need replaced in, in the near future. I guess the, the point I'm trying to get across is, is is I'm concerned about next year. And if we can take care of the issue this year, we may not be in the position next year to have a problem. Yeah. Does that make sense? Well, it, it does, but I think, you know, we've kind of determined that at this point, this isn't a matter of having a shortfall of of revenue sources to cover operating expenses, it's a timing issue, correct? It was a cash flow issue. Cash flow, okay. Correct. So, that, which means that when the money is collected to pay it back, it's as if we had it in hand. So we're right. not going to be short. I, I understand that, but what are we going to do next year? Well, agree. Yeah. Yeah. If we can take care of it this year and figure out what we're going, how to deal with that, then we're covered for that right period, period of financing next year. Well, I think, you know, the recommendation for management of how we manage that, but I think one thing we recognized is that we cannot, we, the district management cannot cut itself into solvency to create excess cash. We can be mindful, they can be mindful of operating expenses, but there's not enough fat to cut off the budget. So I think the budget probably is what it is for this year, for the most part. But it, I agree with you entirely, uh, John, in that in preparation for next year's budget, with the idea that we don't have a, capital cushion, we don't have an operating reserve cushion, we have the PERS issue kind of looming out there, what is the plan? Uh, we need to start thinking about that long before the budget process begins. I'm Marvin, I was on the budget committee. I still have the same concern I had when we finished our meeting. We, we the district, have paid off both engines, the ladder truck, and the station. This fiscal year, we should have had three, over $350,000 extra to spend because we don't have those payments anymore. 
and poof, that money's no place to be seen. How can in one year a district's operating expense go up $350,000? I still think that our interim chief should go through the last couple of years' budgets and this budget and figure out you know, how do we make $350,000 for the payments on capital equipment? And then this year we don't have any money for capital equipment. We should have three hundred and fifty dollars for capital equipment every year because all this equipment's wearing out. You, you've got to buy new equipment. Where'd that money go? And I, I've been doing this 35 years, and I couldn't look at the budget and tell you where it went. But it has to be there. And so I really think that, and you guys as the board promised us budget committee that you would work on this, that you would figure it out and work on it when we pass the budget. And I just want to encourage you guys to do that. There, some, something's awry. I'm, it, it's, I don't think anybody, I, you know, the money didn't disappear. I think it's there someplace. It just needs to be, if we have to have money for capital equipment, or Dickerson's going to be used in the Fred Flintstone mobiles to get to his fires. I mean, you've got to have money every year for that. Well, the Budget Committee's comments are duly noted, and it's not something that we, we can solve at this meeting, so thank you. And um, one, I think, first of all, I, I agree and I, I understand the concerns. Um, one of the first things is we get the, the books in line, which Dina and the staff have been working really hard so we can get a good, accurate picture of where we were. I'm not sure we've had good, accurate pictures over the last, last few years. So we're getting to a position where we'll know what and where. Secondly, we have an audit coming up, and rather than us trying to go through and figure out what's going on, we get the, the professional and auditors to go through and make sure that we don't have any other issues. Um, the third, again, is if the fire chief is the budget officer, um, the responsibility is to give the budget committee a good, accurate picture of where we are, a good, accurate estimation of revenues, a uh, good, accurate estimation of expenses and then go from there and talk about the needs that we may have coming up. You've already mentioned capital reserves. You've mentioned having an unappropriate ending fund balance or beginning fund balance coming up, um, which were some of the comments I had on here. So the board's well aware of those, and that's the goal. Um, it's going to take several years, though, to be able to build up the reserves, whether it be capital um, or the beginning fund balances. But that's been duly noted. Um, Nina's been working very hard. Uh, to be able to get the accurate picture. I think we made a comment that I think we're 95% of the way there. Uh, we did go over the books. They make um, total sense. Again, I don't have last years to look at. I haven't had that opportunity yet. But we will give an accurate picture as we go into the budget season. Good. Hi, everyone. John Murphy. I'm chair of the budget committee. But I think you might want to consider before you even convene a budget committee the board and the interim chief have a workshop and you guys set your priorities for your new budget, like what we want to do about PERS, capital improvement. And then you guys have a plan in place when you bring it to the budget committee. So we don't waste a lot of time asking information that takes you weeks to dig up. Just just get ahead of us a little bit and save some time. Yeah, agree. Yeah. All right. Um, Anything else for the board to discuss? So lastly, the next month's meeting, as uh, was mentioned earlier, is the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Is there a reason for vacations or absence to reschedule them? Answer to yes. You can meet. I won't be here. I, I won't be here either. <laughs> I'm to say that the meeting can't go on. We have a vice chair. Uh, but uh, so is there a reason list from the board that we should consider rescheduling that for a different time. How about Tuesday? Are you gone as an entire week? Tuesday would be better. Tuesday the 20th. Could you do it Tuesday? Could you do it Tuesday? Yes. Yeah. That would be fine for me. No, I think I can. I might be a little bit late, but I think I can be there. Okay. I gotta work all week, so I can have everything. You're good then. Okay, well let's then uh, sure. our yeah. Excuse me. Do you think? Yes. I'm I'm happy to split the room to accommodate for but that is for all night. Um, it shouldn't, oh, it shouldn't it pose a problem. Um, I can make sure that they're doing a hands-on drill somewhere else. 
Well, they don't want to, I mean, that's a priority. If, nope, that, if we can make that work. It's totally capable. Okay. Yeah, that works. Well, good. Well, let's uh, reschedule that the November meeting to the 20th, 6 p.m. in this room. Wait, the 20th? I'm sorry? The 20th? Or the, well, it says the 21st, so I'm oh, going okay. to Tuesday the 20th. I have 19 stuck in my brain for some reason. Okay. Um, oh, that's as uh, designated or uh, allocated under ORS, is there any reason to declare executive session? If not, then this meeting is adjourned. Awesome.